When you think about solar power, you tend to imagine big arrays of photovoltaic cells. But there's one Australian company that's pushing ahead to commercialise a very different type of solar energy, one that relies on gigantic funnels rising nearly a kilometre into the air. The technology that we're using is a very simple technology. It purely takes into account that hot air rises. We have a vast collector that basically collects warm air. At the centre of that collector there's an enormous tower, a very tall tower, which creates a temperature differential between the air underneath the collector and the air surrounding the tower and the air at the top of the tower. That is the chimney effect, if you like, which makes hot air rise. This is a, a model that was used as a display in the Smithsonian Museum in New York, and we received it back earlier this year. That's probably not what the plant's going to look like, but it's a bit like what it'll look like. It's a large tower with a vast collector area around the base of the tower. And if one can imagine this is the collector area, the sun beats down on the roof of this collector area, heats the, sun, heats the air underneath it. Around the base of the tower, at about 80 metres out from the tower base itself, are situated 32 massive turbines. The sun beats down on the roof, warms the air, the air runs towards the centre, through the turbines and up and out of the tower. The tower, of course, being the engine for the plant, which creates temperature driven differential, which creates the airflow. The temperature drops approximately one degree every hundred metres as you go up. That's just a fact of life. So if the temperature on a hot day in Arizona is 35, 40, 45, except in fact it was 47 degrees there this week, if the temperature is 40 degrees, the temperature under the collector is going to be something like 80 or 90 degrees. The temperature at the top of the tower is going to be about 30 degrees, dropping one degree. The tower is going to be somewhere about 750 or 800 metres tall. So it's going to be a very, very tall structure and it's going to be about 130 to 150 metres in diameter. So it's a massive structure. How tall is that? Oh, twice the Taipei Tower. Um, it's probably um, two and a half times the height of the Empire State Building, which I think is about 330 metres tall. So it's a tall structure. We've done a lot of work on proving that this could be built. When we were to build this plant in Australia, and I'm very sorry that we're not building it in Australia, we've had to go to the States, but that's another story. Um, we had latent contractors um, sign off that they could build it. They would be using traditional engineering and construction methodology. There is no problem in the construction of the tower, which was at the very beginning always, gee, it's big, it's, can you build something that big? Well, the answer most definitely and has proven is yes. It is not an issue. The output is going to be a 200 megawatt plant. The plant would power, I think the figure we're using in the States is about 150,000 typical US households and it would take in excess of 90,000 cars off the road equivalent. So it's a, it is a non-polluting passive power plant. It's been modelled to produce power on a capacity of 60% which compares favourably to any other renewable. Um, wind, I think the global average of wind is closer to 20 and concentrated solar is in the low 30s. We're looking to produce power at a capacity of 60%, which is incredibly high. The coal-fired plants are around 80%. So when we first obtained this technology, which is going back to 1998, we took the view that we could not compete, not, we could not only compete with renewables, we had to compete with fossil fuel and traditional fuels. So we took the view of upgrading the technology to ensure that we could do that. And that's where we are now. Once this plant is built, it just runs. It costs nothing to run other than maintenance and um, operational expenses such as guards and security and the like. It costs nothing to run. There is no feedstock to make this plant work other than the sun. We don't have to buy coal, no we don't. We don't use uranium, we don't use anything, we just use the heat of the sun or solar radiation. The, on a, our financial modelling shows the payback period is about 11 years to pay back the cost of the plant. And the cost of the plant is circa 750 million. Obviously we 
would prefer to land in a very hot environment and therefore you're using marginal land at best. The land we're using in Arizona is in a place of La Paz County. It's desert land. It is not used for anything. I believe it was originally a pastoral lease. But um, the number of times I've been there, I haven't seen anything on it. Um, in Australian colloquialism, it'll probably feed an emu on a good day. As an Australian company, we initially looked at building the plant in Australia. Um, we were looking at a place just south of, or well, in Wentworth, east, just east of um, Mildura. Very good site, close proximity to the grid, without any government support at all. In fact, if one looks around Australia at the moment, there's no large scale solar plants in Australia. And having said that, we chose to move to the United States where there are a number of incentives in place, not just rhetoric. They're there, they're legislated, they're available, both from the federal and state governments, and we were basically welcomed when we arrived. We've signed a power purchase agreement, as I mentioned earlier, with the Southern California Public Power Authority. Under that agreement, we have timelines that we have to meet. Um, we will be due for delivery of power probably in the first quarter of 2014. We are currently going through site-specific front-end engineering and uh, we will have land acquisition during the year of 2011. That is Arizona state land, so government land, and we're going through that process at the moment. As far as we're concerned right now, it's all systems go.